Welcome back to MTR for this first episode of My Choice, Not Yours. It's my That's right. It's Mknya. Look, it's not a secret that Ghost Love Score is amazing and one of the most highly regarded and reacted to pieces of Reactivate. Comment down below if you don't know what Reactivate is. I'm happy to justify it to you. Particularly looking at the performance live at Vakken 2013. Upon reacting to this, subscriber counts for reaction channels immediately explode. There's one particular part which gets everyone's attention. Here's my reaction to that for the first time. So that it wasn't before long that I realized that someone had coined a term for what I had felt. But I'm really sorry to say that I actually couldn't shake the feeling that there's so much more behind this than just an amazing ability from the floor. After all, on this channel alone, I've listened to her a lot, but I've never felt what I felt in this song to the same extent in any other song of night wishes or flaws ever again. And let's just put it bluntly, it's not just once. When we go back and listen to and watch his performance, it's over and over and over again. So on listening again, apart from the obvious place, this feeling happens to me here. And here. Let me be clear, I did not get these feelings the first time I listened to it. So why? The answer is a complex combination of amazing composing and, of course, the choice of vocalist. But, to put it in its simplest form, the answer boils down to the song's use of harmony and keys. That is, the chords and the musical scale that the piece falls into. I hate to break it to you. It's not just Floor Janssen. It's mostly the composer, Thomas Holopanen. I just butchered his last name, didn't I? <laughs> Stay with me here because this involves some understanding of some simple music theory. Ghost Love Score is an over 10 minute epic with many different contrasting sections. To understand this further, we need to understand how keys work in our Western pitch system. A key is a set of musical notes which are used to make up a song. That is, the scale that the song is based around. These can be major or minor scales. For example, if I wanted to create a song in the key of C major, which is quite well regarded as the basic or the most basic of keys, especially to play on the keyboard. I will familiarize myself with the scale and I will then know what set of pitches I could use. In the key of C major, C is the first note and is considered, I guess, the most important. This is called the tonic, note number one. Remember this, because this is why Ghost Love Score is just so magnificent. Most songs end on the tonic to help the listener feel at ease. Often they end on the tonic at the end of sections as well. Most songs are only in one key, but occasionally they could change their key. Meaning that the set of notes, the scale, that I use, are different to the set of notes which were in the previous key. This usually lifts the piece of music feeling like it's now moved somewhere else because we felt at home on our previous key, but now we have a new home. Well, my first point about Ghost Love Score is this. Ghost Love Score in its 10 minutes is in five different keys. That's discounting the fact that many of these keys are used more than once 
meaning that there are many key changes. So to be as specific as I can, with some exceptions, this equals a whopping 17 key changes throughout the 10 minutes. Do your maths. Let's take a look at this. D minor. F minor. D minor. F minor. F major. B flat minor. F major. B flat minor. Starts in B flat minor, but is actually F minor. The same as last section, but one tone higher. Starts in C minor, but is actually in G minor. We go on to remain in the key of G minor for nearly two minutes. B flat minor. G minor. B flat minor. G minor. B flat minor. Still B flat minor. D minor. F minor. And we remain in F minor for the remainder of the piece of music. Okay, so all I've really proven here is that Thomas used a bunch of key changes. It doesn't really explain anything. Just hold on because this will all make sense very soon. In order to understand this, we need to understand how basic harmony works. The definition of harmony is to play two or more notes at the same time. When we're talking about harmony in music, we refer to chords which are used in a given key. The word chords and harmony can be used interchangeably and are in many circumstances. Remember when I used the C major scale as an example of a scale? With these specific set of notes, we can create chords. The chord which is based on note number one, in this case C, is called chord one. In this case, it's a C chord, expressed in Roman numerals, a capital letter or not a capital letter, but that's not really relevant at the moment. The chord which is based on note number two, in this case a D, will be called chord two. In this case, it's a D minor chord. Note number three will be chord three, and so on, and so forth. until we get back to number eight, which is also called chord number one. This might be quite a lot to digest, but when studying harmony in music, in Western music, fundamentally, the most important chord is chord number one. 
So if we're in C major, a C major chord would be considered the most important chord. As stated before, this chord is the chord which is based on the first note of the scale, hence giving the piece of music a more settled feel or a, a sense of home. Chord five is also considered one of the most important chords in a key. Chord five, for all intents and purposes, is the antithesis of chord number one. Chord one feels like home. Ending on chord one will make the listener feel settled as if their journey has been complete. Ending on any other chord will not, especially chord number five. Because chord five is pretty much the opposite of chord number one, ending on chord number five will cause discontent. There's no resolution and the listener will not feel satisfied. So wait, how does this relate to Ghost Love Score? I mean, we all feel pretty satisfied after that spectacular ending. Well, it really boils down to how Thomas uses or doesn't use chord number five in the ridiculous range of keys which he explores in Ghost Love Score, remembering we have five different keys and 17 different key changes within 10 minutes. So chord five is the antithesis of chord number one. It's the furthest removed chord from our home chord. Let's look at this objectively for a second. Home feels the most satisfying when you get back to it after being really, really far away from it. This is the same in music. Changing from chord five to chord one gives an ultimate feeling of home, satisfaction and resolution. This is what's called a perfect cadence. I'm really smashing the theory here, aren't I? <laughs> the only thing that's actually more perfect than this is to go from what's called a five seven to a chord one. I'll not go into the details of the theory behind chord 5-7, but just know that that means you're adding one extra note to chord number 5. This is the most powerful finish you can have in any song in Western music. Composers have been using this for hundreds of years to help establish an ending and release of tension after not using chord 5-7 for some period of time in their piece of music. Beethoven tends to overdo them in his symphonies, but what's really important to note is that it helps bring resolution and satisfaction to the listener. It's what you've been waiting for. Are you still with me? So here's the clincher. Thomas uses five different keys in Ghost Love Score, and through those five different keys, there are 17 key changes. In order to feel comfortable or settled, it's important for a composer to establish a key and explore the key through different harmonies or chords. And ideally for, a, again, a powerful finish and ending, ending on chord 5-7 to 1 for us to feel most at ease and resolved. We have 17 key changes in 10 minutes. Thomas does not give us enough time to feel at ease ever in one particular key. However, what this epic does offer us is a small point in time where we do feel somewhat at ease in one particular key. The over two minutes where it remains in the key of G minor. What makes this worse is Thomas barely ever uses chord number five and never, ever uses chord number five to chord number one throughout the piece of music. Until the end. Are you starting to follow? There are two times, only two, that Thomas uses chord number five in this piece of music before the final section. And by the final section, I mean this one. And both times, they do not resolve to chord number one in their key. This is here. And the next time is here, in, in the section where he's in F major, where he follows the chord 5 with a chord number 4. Throughout this piece of music, until the end, musically, we do not get an appropriate resolution. So what's Thomas doing? What he's doing is he's moving through different keys and he's intentionally holding off the resolution we are so deeply looking for. 
until we get to the final section. This is the last key change. Remember, this is one of the parts which gave me and which continues to give me goosebumps every time I listen to it. Because I know and you know, and she knows, subconsciously, that there are no more key changes. This is your final key. And this is where you're going to hear those final three notes which gave you your initial flogasm. Thomas uses chord five to chord one twice before that huge ending. It's here. And here. The first time, the melody doesn't end on the tonic. Remember, the most powerful ending we can have is chord five to one with the melody that is flaws, vocals, ending on the tonic. The second time, however, it does go to the tonic, but it doesn't resolve to the tonic in a linear way, either stepping down or up to it. It doesn't feel final. This is now the ultimate tease of what's to come next. By now, on second, third, fourth, fifth listening, you should be feeling it already because you know what's coming up. Thomas has spent the whole piece of music making you wait for this moment, not using chord five to one at all, until the very last section, almost spamming you with it. Remember, the most powerful finish we can get is having an ending going from chord 5-7 to 1 in the harmony, coupled with the melody, in this case the singer, ending on note number 1. So it's not enough that this has just happened in the melody. And a competent, amazing vocalist hitting ridiculous pitches which we haven't heard before, coupled with the harmony and the melody of the piece of music, what it's led to. But the instrumental section after that reuses the same chord progression to remind us over and over about what we just heard. In this section alone, Thomas uses 5-7 to 1 five times. And that, my friends, is why your floorgasm didn't end with Floor's vocal melody. Leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching this first episode of Mknya. It's Mknya.